Well, the clock's counting down until those polls close in the Southern Queensland electorate of Groom today. Now, it's widely expected the LNP will retain the seat in a by-election triggered by a shock resignation of John McVeigh. Now, last hour, we did speak to the LNP candidate. Joining me live now is the Labor candidate, Chris Maybush. Chris, thanks very much for your company this afternoon. Thanks, Andrea. Chris, fair to say the me? odds are well and truly... I've got, I've got you there, Chris. It's fair to say the odds are well and truly stacked against you. Yeah, it's, it, it's been a long two weeks, and uh, but it's been a marvellous opportunity for this electorate in regional Queensland to really send the Morrison government a, me a message that, it, that they're ignoring these safe LNP seats. And there's no doubt now that the message is, is out there and that we have major... Uh, funding requests on the table. All that discretionary funding that's provided by the been provided by the Morrison government, you know, the sports rorts and the, and the community grants programs, all that sort of funding is going to the, the marginal seats in the capital cities. And this is regional Queensland standing up and saying, hey, enough's enough. Well, we certainly know that the seat of Groom isn't one of those marginal seats. John McVeigh achieved, I think, with no, a five right. point something percent swing last election to bring up to about a twenty percent margin. Just how much are you hoping to narrow that fat margin this time around, if you can do that? Well, in, in two thousand and seven, I achieved a ten point five nine percent swing against the then sitting federal cabinet minister Ian McFarlane. Obviously, times have changed now, and we're in a uh, post-COVID uh, environment where we uh, appreciate um, the, the difficulties in, in government. But this is all about identifying the fact that we have missed out on funding here in this electorate for far too long. Funding in, in areas such as the NDIS, the disabled in this community have just clearly missed out. The aged care centres throughout this electorate, in, particularly in the regions outside of Toowoomba, are in desperate need of major financial assistance. None has been forthcoming in this campaign from the federal government. It's interesting that only Labor has put money on the table in this campaign. Isn't that amazing? You know, a safe LNP seat, and they haven't even bothered to stump up with some money on a by-election. Well, to be fair, putting money on the table, they'd still win, need to win the next federal election for that money to actually uh, come through. But I'm interested uh, also... Yes, with yes, regards but what to trying highlight... To... I was just going to say, with narrowing that, or well, attempting to narrow that margin, we have seen a swing throughout the recent elections we've had, state and territory elections, a swing towards incumbent governments during COVID. How much do you think that will play a part in the by-election in Groom today? Well, no, I, I think that the Toowoomba community, however they vote, they know that marginal seats get all the funding. And so that's the message that's gone through to the federal government. And ho hopefully that reflects in, in a swing here today. And certainly on the pre-polling and on election polls on the booth today, I have get a lot of uh, support there and I'm hopeful of a reasonable swing. And that will just re reinforce the message that's gone back to, to Canberra that regional Queensland needs to be remembered. We need to have our fair share of funding. And I'm interested, uh, some of the issues that we've been discussing, we also discussed uh, earlier with the uh, LNP candidates, the inland rail. Now, there has been a lot of controversy over this. What have you been hearing from the constituents you've been speaking with? Well, I don't know if you know it, but for the last four years, I've fought a community campaign here against a federal government development proposing to bulldoze critical koala habitat in Toowoomba. And that's just consist the consistent story that we're having for this, with this government. They don't, didn't listen to us in Toowoomba. They're clearly not listening to the, the farmers around Milmerin and Cecil Plains as to the route for the inland rail. And then they pre-select an, an inexperienced LNP candidate whose pitch to the party room was to rip up the environmental protection laws of this nation. Now, if there's one thing that stopped the bulldozers on the Toowoomba escarpment, it was the environmental protection legislation. So it's pretty inexperienced uh, work from this LNP candidate. If, if he thinks he's seriously representing this community and calling for that, well, he's, he, he's got another thing coming. Just finally, Chris, how much do you think you can narrow that margin by? 
yeah, I'm looking for, for a, a significant swing. And, you know, that's that's our, been our effort over the last two weeks. And certainly the support on pre-polling. I've worked every hour of every day of the pre-polling and on election day. And I'm pretty confident that uh, we've, uh, our message has resonated with the community and also the message has gone through to Canberra. Fair funding for regional Queensland. Chris Maybush, thank you very much for your time this afternoon. Thank you.